Hey guys, it's Matthew with Pasture Management, and today we're going to be talking about rotational grazing, why you should implement it on your livestock operation, and how to implement it. But first, what we want to do is we want to go over some of the materials that we're going to need uh, in order to do some rotational grazing. What we've got here on the truck is uh, we've got some energizers, uh, we've got poly wire, we've got some poly braid, uh, we've got our geared reels, uh, we've got step in posts, uh, we've got some fiberglass close for our, our corners. Um, and we've got uh, several other tools and accessories that we're going to need. So let's get started. Good morning. I'm David with Pasture Management. And this morning I want to visit with you a little bit about rotational grazing and why to consider it in your operation. Behind us, you're looking at a stand of conventional fescue and it has been conventionally grazed. We put the whole herd on the entire pasture and they eat it as they wish. In front of us, we're looking at about a 15 acre pasture of winter annuals. And we have this pasture subdivided into paddocks to rotationally graze. And why do we even want to consider doing this? What will it do for our operation? What will it, how will it benefit our bottom line? Um, when we talk about rotational grazing, you can do intensive grazing, mob grazing, there's over a dozen different terminologies that can be applied to this practice, but I like thinking about it in it most, its most basic form. Uh, let's say we have one pasture. Let us simply go into that one pasture and put a division fence. Let's divide it one time. What we should do is let the cattle eat on one side for a certain period of time until they have eaten the grass down, and then the other. Why is that important? It's been proven for many decades now that if you let cattle graze conventionally, as you see behind me, they're going to always go back and eat the grass that is the most tender, the shortest. You can see behind me how we've got these big clumps of green that the cattle have not eaten. Why? It's the most mature. It's tough. It's not as palatable. They don't like it, so they go back and keep eating the shorter grass first. And what's wrong with that, that depletes the energy in that blade of grass. You know, the shorter a blade of grass is, the less photosynthesis that can take place, and it cannot grow and reproduce as quick. But when we rotational graze, we'll put this herd of cattle on this roughly five-acre section, they will eat it down uniformly in two to three days. Then we will move them to this paddock. In two to three days after that, we'll move them to a next one. On this farm, I have enough paddocks that I can rotate these cattle. And every 21 days, they're coming back to this one over here. What happens in that 21 days? This grass regrows. It looks just as nice as it is today. When we eat it, we go back to this one. Now, why is all that important? On this same number of acreage by rotational grazing, statistics prove we can produce 25 to 40 percent more forage on the given acreage simply by how we are managing it. The cow is managing the grass. The fence is managing the cow. Um, as we'll see here in a few moments, um, how cattle flow through this system, it's very efficient, and we'll get into the how to set your operation up. You can do it for pennies a foot. We're getting ready to show you how simple it is to install and utilize your electric fencing, your rotational grazing components. But before we install them, let's talk about a few things to get ready. The first thing we must consider is our power supply. What we have in this pasture is an existing fixed knot wire fence, and you will notice that this fence has an offset bracket, a hot wire, on each side. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. We have an insulator here with uh, a hot wire, and this wire goes all the way around this pasture. So at any point where I want to come off with a poly wire and a gate handle and make a cross fence. 
a division, a division fence. We have the avail availability to do it because we have electricity all the way around it. Let me talk a little bit more about what these products will do for you other than giving you a uh, power supply wherever you need it. This fix knot fence is the premium wire that pasture management sells. I do recommend that you always put a dresser wire on top of your fence. We've used a piece of 12 and a half gauge high tensile electric wire. These offset wires, and notice here's a nice difference. On this side of the post, we've used an insulator. On the other side of the post, we have a plastic outrigger that reaches off 10 inches. So you have two options there. But what this will do in addition to being your current, your electric current around the property, it keeps the animals from rubbing and pushing and scratching on this fence. So you've just protected your long-term investment for pennies a foot. I have our step-in post or tread-in post, as we like to call it, it's an old New Zealand term. We have our poly braid. This is a braided polypropylene product, and this is our premium product that we sell. It uses a mixture of tin, copper, and stainless steel as the conductor. You can put up literally miles of this product and it is still conductive. It will still flow electricity, just like your 12 and a half gauge high tensile wire, but it's much cheaper, um, much easier to use, I should say, much easier. We also have our gate handle. You know, right now there's no current flowing through this reel. I hooked this gate handle onto that wire. Now this has electric current It'd shock me if I'd touch it. It will shock the animal when needed. But uh, what we're gonna do is get ready, and I'll just show you how quick and simple this is. I'm gonna hook that just to the fence for now. We'll energize it later. These fiberglass posts, we sell a lot of them at pasture management. It's simply a piece of 7 8 inch diameter fiberglass that is sun guard coated so notice I'm grabbing it with my hand I'm not getting splinters you know you can work with it with your bare hand I take my cotter pin clip this metal clip that I'm attaching the wire to the post I'm simply going to go around and run this back this way bring my reel under the fence and now I'm ready to walk what we've just created here is a gate opening. When I get ready to let the cattle, you know, go to paddock A to paddock B, I'm just simply gonna let that yellow gate handle down, pull this out of the way, and they'll walk right through this area. The, the reel that I have is a geared reel. It uses a three to one geared ratio. Now we sell a less expensive reel that has a one to one ratio but really they have become obsolete over the years. Everyone loves using this geared reel. And I'm gonna show you something just real quick. I'm gonna stop. And when I say three to one, for every one revolution I make of this handle, this reel goes around three times. So if I wanna like take this poly wire up, move it to a different part of the pasture, use it again, look how quick I can wind this up. I mean, if you want to, you have to run to keep up with the thing. So we'll go back and finish putting it up now, but it is a very, very user-friendly product. Folks, you may have noticed in my back pocket is the Speedrite Fault Finder. This reads voltage and amperage, and it is a very, very handy tool for helping locate shorts and problem areas on your fence. Now, today I'm basically using it just as a volt meter, which you can do. And you know, before I turn the cattle in here, we better make sure there's some voltage on this fence because an electric fence without electricity isn't very effective. But as you can see, um, the number that comes up in that upper right screen, 6.7 kV, 7 kV, that's somewhere between 
6,500 to 7,000 volts. That is plenty of voltage to deter our cattle. When they touch this poly tape or this poly wire, they will get a shock. Folks, what we're gonna do now that we have our poly braid ran, we're going to walk back up through here and we're gonna install our tread in post somewhere between 40, 45 feet apart. You can see the terrain on this land is rolling to gently rolling. So 40 or 45 feet is really good. You know, if you're really on the coastal plain of North Carolina, for example, where it's just flat as a pancake, you can go 50 or 60 feet. And if you're in the mountain region, more hilly terrain, you might wanna pull in and go on a 30 foot spacing. But this is a very user friendly product. You'll notice the steel stake comes up into the plastic and it comes up into the base of that post that far because today we've got plenty of moisture. The posts are going in beautifully. Now in the summertime, it's a different story. You may have to get a hammer in July or August and help knock this in the ground, but that's why the post is built as robust as it is. All right, we're just gonna get started. Now that we have all of our tread in post installed, you can see our fence line. Um, we're gonna go up here and power it up now and check our voltage. Then we'll be ready to put some cattle in. What we're doing first here, folks, we're gonna check our voltage on our fence. We have, you know, 7.4, 7.6, so let's just say 7,500 volts, which is plenty of electricity to deter the animal. We're gonna hook up our gate handle and it does energize through the handle to the poly wire. And now let's check the voltage on this wire. 6,800 volts. We're in good shape and ready to go.